Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Ms. Van Dyke, um, uh, Senator uh, Chairman Harkin's daughter would call you awesome. Um, I'm sure a lot of people would. Uh, I think that your current foster parents are probably pretty awesome too, is that right? Yes, they are. And uh, uh, Senator uh, Enzi brought up uh, a few things that about and, and led to the school of origin. Some of the parents that you had, probably foster parents, weren't so awesome. Is that correct? No, not, not all of my foster care placements were successful, and there's a number of reasons for that. You want all me right. to go over them? Um, well, <laughs> I know you'd like to, <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> well, the reason I bring this up is, is that the importance of transportation. Hmm. Because um, you were, when you talked about wanting, you're really not knowing as a foster child that it was your option to go to a school of origin. But I remember reading that you wouldn't, didn't want to ask your new parents mm. to provide the transportation, even though it, it, Senator Enzi it was only a few minutes away. Exactly, and um, it goes back to that you know, emotional stability. You're in a new home, you don't know these people, you know, they've already made accommodations for you. You feel like a burden, and so when you go out of your way to ask for yet another um, accommodation, it just feels like you're more of a burden to the family. Especially when you're used to moving a lot, you wanna, you know, make a good impression. You don't wanna rock the boat so that, you know, you're seen as a burden, you're seen as someone that isn't manageable, and so, I mean. And, and obviously they sort of, these foster parents didn't make you feel like you could say, hey, I might want to get a ride every day yes, to, to my old school. And, and this is what, you know, Senator Murray and I have uh, introduced uh, a, a bill to part, and, and part of it is to address this problem, the Fostering Success in, in Education Act, and it would require school districts to collaborate with, with uh, child welfare agencies to enable foster youth to remain in their old schools. And part of this would be providing some kind of arrangements or funding for transportation. And if, if that requirement existed at the time, would that have changed things for you, made them better? Um, it actually depends. I mean, if I had known about it, it would have changed it perhaps. Um, like I was talking about liaisons and counselors, those people who can actually just communicate with a foster homeless youth to tell them what's available. I think that's important. Because you can have as many resources on the table as you want. If foster homeless youth can't get access to them, if they don't know about them, they're just gonna sit there. You need to make um, these options accessible to people. Well, th that's part of this bill too, to make those people, uh, uh, to make liaisons and counselors accessible mm -hmm. and also give them time and training to be accessible to you uh, so, you know, so that they can help the foster child. Um, what would, difference would that have made if you had had that earlier? Uh, if I had had that um, when I entered into fifth grade at Lake Harriet, first of all, the fact that I was allowed to enter in so quickly was due to a collaboration between the shelter I'd been living at and my school. So that was, again, the real importance of collaboration. However, if they had contacted my school in St. Paul, they would have realized that I didn't have that fourth grade education I would have gotten the opportunity to repeat the fourth grade to make up for what I had lost in my education. And at that point, you know, if there had been a liaison there, I probably would have gone into the foster care system immediately because of my home situation. I probably would have been adopted right now. Um, my educational, my education would probably be that of a normal high schooler. So, you, so essentially you've missed a grade of school. Yes. You missed fourth grade. <laughs> so you've got a 3.7. Hmm despite missing fourth grade. Yes. So you I've, skipped I've really a grade even though that wasn't quite your intention at the time. <laughs> I've really had to work the last year and a half in my stable placement to really get my grades up. And that's a product of being in a stable placement and having those choices and options. Uh, so, and if you had had that extra year, if you had had that year, you'd... I, I, I think I would have been a 4.0 student. I know I would have been accepted into the university or any other school I apply to. I consider myself a good student. I love learning. And 
if I'd had the kind of opportunities that, you know, just normal students had had, you know, having that linear education, that uninterrupted education, I'm sure I would be in an even better place than I am now. Well, uh, my prediction for you is a bright future. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs>